Welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy, and that he's allowed me once again to be on this, the time side of life, and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I want to continue to express my appreciation to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers, and I'm praying that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And of course, I am continuing to encourage you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. And it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And this evening, we're going to be very brief because our speaker tonight uh, has a long sermon. But just remember, you can give somebody some assistance if they come to you and you can't help them. Just have them to call 211 and they can... Uh, basically convey their need to the receptionist or the representative and then they will be directed to the source that will help them to eliminate that need. If you're still looking for employment, eastbayworks.org, one-stop career centers, they're located throughout Alameda and Contra Costa counties. There you can go and find yourself in a world of jobs that will help you with resume or critique your resume and uh, assist you with a mock interview and and those things that will help you become gainfully employed. So remember, that's eastbayworks.org. And we're going to forego our prayer list tonight, but remember, you can write to us and send to us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones to The Gospel Truth, P.O. Box 3944, Berkeley, California, 94702. Once again, The Gospel Truth, P.O. Box 3944, Berkeley, California, 94703. And then... All you have to do is send us the names. I'll pray for them, encourage you to pray for them, and everyone in the viewing audience to pray for them as well. And so tonight, we're very fortunate and blessed to have as a guest speaker, the president of Southwestern Christian College, Dr. Jack Evans. So without any further remarks, Dr. Jack Evans. Tonight is an unusual night, and I'll tell you why, and I'm glad that God has given me the opportunity to stand here on this particular night. And that is, we need to understand that Satan and all the, the host of hell have declared an all-out war against God. And right now, there are hundreds of people in Washington, D.C., waiting for the ruling of the court on same-sex marriage. But I'm here to tell you tonight that the court has already spoken. Yes, sir. The Supreme Court of uh -huh. Heaven yes, sir. has already spoken, and we don't have to sit around wrapped up in blankets and, and trying to deal with the cold weather waiting for nine human beings who make mistakes just like any other human beings. Right, right. The court has spoken. Yes, sir. And the, the reading of that which the court has said starts with Genesis 1 and verse 1. We'll go through Revelation 22, 21. The whole Bible has already given us what God has to say about any subject you want to deal with. Yeah. And so we don't have to wait around until the court hears all of the arguments in Washington and then gather in their conference room and deliberate and decide whether or not a man can marry a man or a woman can marry a woman, the court has spoken. And when the chief judge, yes. God himself, yes, sir. created man, he told man what to do. Yes, sir. 
He told man that he would have a wife. He needed a helpmate. And that helpmate was not to be another man. No, no. He made woman. Thank you, God. And uh, he gave instructions as to how man and woman were to marry. Uh -huh. One man for one woman. And then there were to be offsprings to this first couple. And these offsprings of this first couple would be uh, not only the children of uh, Adam and Eve, but they would be the children of God. Yeah. And God's children make up even the church today. Yes, sir. So we don't have to wait to read the paper in the morning or a few weeks from now and, and try to find out what has the court ruled. Listen. The court is, as far as this court in Washington, is fallible. They make mistakes. They have made a number of rulings, and after so many years, another court will come along and make another ruling. You take the, the, the subject of uh, racism. Plessy versus Ferguson, 1896. A Supreme Court ruled not long after slavery had ended. A Supreme Court ruled, ruled that segregation was constitutional. And that rule uh, not only uh, did away with the wording of racism. It left an indelible mark on the hearts of those who had been slaves. And they continued to, to live and to work in an environment of racism because that court had ruled. But on May the 17th, 1954, yeah. in Brown versus the Brown. Board of Topeka, mm -hmm. another court looked at the same document, same. the Constitution, yeah. and said that segregation was unconstitutional. Well, someone says, how is it that we can get the real answer when the courts are changing, people are changing on the courts, women are being added, older men are passing on, others are being added to the court, and people have their different views about the ruling of the court and how they should rule. Let me tell you something. In Genesis 18 and verse 25, mm -hmm when God was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. The same kind of foolishness yes, sir. the court in Washington is dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. God knew what he was going to do and Abraham started to ask him some questions. Lord, are you really going to destroy these cities? God said, yes. He said, what if I can find 50 people righteous? Uh, will you not do it? God said, find 50 and I will not do it. And he went on down from 50 to you to 10, as you know. And, uh, but the main point here is that Abraham said, now you forget about the Supreme Court court justice in Washington right now, or any of the uh, justices, Abraham said, shall not the judge of the whole earth do right. Now you keep that as a running theme 
through this lesson. Shall not the judge of the whole earth, not some judge who's come in there by vote, appointment by the president and confirmed by the Senate, no, no, the judge of the whole earth. Yes, sir. Not only of Houston and Dallas and Texas, and he's the judge of the whole earth. And here's that statement that no man can really deny. Shall not the judge of the whole earth do right? Now, if you're having trouble about mixed marriages, I want to ask you, when God destroyed the evil cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh -huh. did he do right? Yes, sir. Or did he do wrong? If you believe he did wrong, I'd like to see your hand. Where are those cities right now when we were in the Holy Land, standing on the banks of the Dead Sea? Our guide said, you want to know where those cities are? He said, yes, where are they located? He said, you can't see them. They are under the Dead Sea. Cover that. Nothing lives in the Dead Sea. Salty water in the Dead Sea. And you remember when God was getting ready to destroy uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he told Lot and his family to leave, but, but don't look back. Yeah. Well, Lot had a wife. Well. And she was curious uh, huh. about how it would look well, well. with fire and brimstone coming down. And so she looked back yeah. and turned into a pillar of salt. Lord have mercy. And I was over there and I said, no wonder this water is so salty. <laughs> And I remember some men questioning Jesus hundreds of years later. And they questioned him and questioned him and questioned him until he finally just used one sentence to shut them up. Remember? In other words, let me put it in our language. Do you fellas remember Lot's wife? You know, she, she just couldn't obey. And uh, she was turned into a pillar of salt. Mm -hmm. My friends, as we look at the boundaries being set, the people had to agree that they would not remove the boundaries. This is in the Old Testament. Joshua had some trouble with some of the tribes because they didn't think that they had been given enough property, that is, but the boundaries were sometimes rocks or trees or posts, and when they were set, they were not to be moved. Now, the Joshua I'm talking about is the one in the Bible because I read in the Jet Magazine about a Joshua who was caught uh, making uh, liquor illegally. <laughs> and when he came into the judge's uh, courtroom, he was so nervous, just shaking, just shaking. The judge said, and the judge knew a little about the Bible, he said, I see, your name is Joshua. He said, yes, yes, your honor, yes, yes. He said, he thought he'd have a little fun with him. He said, are you, you the Joshua that made the sun stand still in the Bible? The old man just shaking, he said, no, 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 sir, I'm the, I, I, I'm the Joshua that, ma that made the moon shine in the woods. <laughs> but the Joshua that made 
the sun stand still was not really the one who did it, but God yeah. is the one who controls the sun, the moon, and the stars. And he controls his house. And so tonight, as we look at this old ancient proverb, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have made. Yeah. I have set. The point is, when it comes to God, whatever He sets, you don't move it. No, sir. But then I need to, I need to go back from uh, the words uh, that were used in Proverbs. Uh, Thy fathers have set. Because uh, the fathers there were human beings themselves. Yes. And they could set landmarks and boundaries, and they could even move them. But when I preach the word, and when I talk about the things that cannot be changed, that cannot be moved, the boundaries that cannot be moved. I'm not talking about boundaries that were set by some old men a long time ago. I'm talking about the boundary that God has set. Yes, sir. You can't tamper with God's boundary. You remember in the book of Job, mm -hmm. uh, those uh, friends, friends of Job, of Job. Yeah. Uh, upset a man by the name of Elihu, a young man. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to read all of this because I'm a long-winded preacher, you know, and I don't want to go over time, but I want to tell you about it. And uh, since you are a Christian, you should already no. have read about it. Uh, but, 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 but Elihu sat there for so long, and then he... He, he, he interrupted. He said he saw that they, they just couldn't answer Job as to why he was in uh, the type of situation he was in. And uh, he sat for so long and sat there rather for so long. And, and then he said to them, he said, I am young and you are very old. And some people think the older you are, the more perfect you are in what you say. But all of us are growing old. Yes, sir. Some of you remember when I was here and had black hair. Some of you I remember when your hair was there. <laughs> But, but as time, as time passes on, yeah. you're going to change physically. Yeah. Use whatever just for men, wigs, <laughs> toupees, feathers, <laughs> for anything you want on your head, you old. <laughs> and you don't have to be ashamed of being old, but just recognize that Old people can make mistakes too. Yeah. And that's what Elihu said to these men. I'm young and you are very old, but you have not been able to bring any light on the subject regarding Job's uh, situation. So now let me talk. All right, he said, and let me speak on God's behalf. Let me tell you, you, you can't go wrong. Now, you can go wrong quoting some of the old men. Amen, Walls. You can go wrong quoting me, quoting Brother Maxwell, Brother Foster, and, and any of us who are old, and some of you other old men who are almost sleep already. I, I, you, 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 you can go wrong who mentored me, Brother Marshall Keeble, Brother Levi Kennedy, Brother Arian Hogan, Jess Winston, 
and many of those men whom I, whom I knew uh, personally, and they were great men, great men, and they knew themselves that they were not infallible. Jones knows 
what it's like to be intimidated by a typical church building. So he figured a bar would be the best place for people to feel comfortable in. This is what it is all about. They've been told they're going to be uh, different types of things that they would do, that anything they would do in the bar, but they can't start selling the drinks until after 12 o'clock. And it's called the Bar Church. And it's the Southern, it's the work of the Southern Hills Church of Christ in Abilene. At Southern Hills in Dallas or other places in Abilene. And I'm saying it. Someone said, no, Brother Evans, if I were you, I wouldn't say that were you not me. I'm saying it. And I'll tell these so-called elders that they are not God's leaders to set up a church in a bar and drink and do everything that the world does and call itself the Church of Christ. If that's not moving a boundary, what do you have to do to do it? Good work, Jack. Now, some of you may have been getting your liquor somewhere else, but don't go to church to get it. Somebody said he caught me. He got me. No, I'm not. I have so many other things I'd like to tell you. But I'll tell you one thing, I plan to do some writing on this so-called bar church. I'm already doing writing on these so-called mixed marriages and homosexuality. I have a book, A Sacred Cow That Must Be Slaughtered, an expose of homosexuality. These things are creeping into the church and many church members are accepting them without question. Now, I know you thought I was going to talk about the Baptists and the Methodists and, 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 the, and doctrine. I, I, you know I do that too. But I see something more hideous than this Baptist man. When you start, uh, you know, you, you, you can't bring uh, the, the church in, into the uh, place where they have the bill so that it's uh, whiskey or whatever, uh, but you can bring the whiskey into the church. And, and some people say, that's what we need. That's what people want. They, that's what they want. I'm going to close with this. We have a student who was a, a, a freshman. And uh, he had come in just not too long ago. And uh, in chapel, the students uh, lead uh, the young men. And um, the young man got up and read the scripture. Uh, and he was nervous. When he finished, he said, now, brothers and sisters, uh, I have uh, just uh, read to you from the third chapter of um, Jack Daniel. <laughs> now, how many of you in here know what Jack Daniel is? You may as well hold your hands up. Or pull out your Bible. Now, can't you see a drunkard? wandering into the Southern Hills Church of Christ where they have moved all boundaries and say, this is what I'm looking for. This is my church. <laughs> Let me drop one thing to you to remember. This thing about same-sex marriage mm -hmm. is not a matter of our saying we, or even God, hate people who call themselves gay. God hates the sin of homosexuality. And what our president said when he said that it was legal he did not say, and he could not say, that it's moral. Civility has nothing to do with it. I wish I could get into that. But I'm going to be writing something 
And I hope our other brethren will write on these things that are happening right now that are destroying not just the doctrine of Christ about the one Lord, one faith, and baptism, destroying the moral fiber of the church of Christ. And when that happens, it is no longer a church of Christ. And anybody who does that has no place in these lectureships.